Hi there, this is our second class on generative grammar, Chomsky and linguistics from the minimalist approach. So what we will do today is to review some of the things that we have said and uh, then we will move on to discuss issues that we have not discussed so far. By the end of the class I hope that what we said in class one will be clearer and that we can get familiarized with some new categories and operations that take place when we derive sentences. Of course, uh, there will be a lot of questions by the end of the class, but hopefully enough, there will be things that will be much clearer. So let us start reviewing some of the things that we have said. The first thing I would like to state today is, and to review, today is the fact that we talked about the formation of sentences and basically we analyzed the way in which we form verb phrases. We concentrated on the verb phrase like tennis and we said that that phrase is formed by putting two constituents together, more specifically the word like which belongs to the category, category verb and the noun tennis and we said that we should go about merging, that is putting constituents together in this fashion, given the fact that English is a head-first language. Let us bear in mind that by head-first, what we are saying is that in the derivation of the sentence, the element that is the head, in this case the predicator like, we will discuss the category predicator in a minute, the predicator like should be placed on the left. That is what we call head first, that is the head goes on the uh, left, it comes first. And the complement tennis comes right after the predicator head verb like to form the verb phrase like tennis. But you might be thinking this is nowhere near a sentence. It is a phrase okay but it's nowhere near a sentence and you're right that's where we are uh, trying to get so what we uh, are saying here is that so far we got a verb phrase and today we will start discussing argument structure and we will say the following the verb like semantically is a verb that denotes some kind of emotion something that we sense, something that happens to us. And the verb like requires an object. We're going to say that tennis is the object of our liking. So basically the sentence is predicating liking. That is the reason why the verb like is called predicator. And it's going to have a complement or object, which we will call argument and our argument will be called theme. More about this in the near future. So, so far, basically what we're saying is that we like, we predicate liking something, and this something is called the theme, the thing that we like. But we get a problem here because we have a predicator, we have a complement, but we know that if we want to predicate liking, we also need an entity that will sense the liking, an entity that will experience the liking. And that entity is, in this case, the pronoun I. It is I do like tennis, which is higher up in the structure. By higher up we mean, okay, probably we need to review this. We go from bottom to top and from right to left in our derivation of the sentence. So when I say higher up, basically what I mean is uh, if you think of the sentence in a linear fashion, what comes first, right? What comes first? It's the first here is up. In the middle, we got a whole other constituent, and that's where we're going now, right? Uh, we need also to anchor our sentence in some time, in some temporal space. So, what we will say is the following, that the verb phrase 
that we have formed will now become the complement of the T head do so we will say this very slowly the word the auxiliary verb do is or functions as the head the T head the tense head in a space that we call T prime so when we put T and verb phrase together we do not form a TP as you may have expected but we form a T prime where is a T prime by saying T prime what we are saying is our predication like tennis has merged with tense that is it is now anchored in time and we know that that time is the present or we can talk about it's typically called present but here by present we mean some sort of atemporal uh, time even if it sounds paradoxical because we do not mean I like tennis now we mean I simply like tennis like all the time so we're anchoring our sentence our predication in time but we need to specify which the entity that will experience the liking is and here the entity that is experiencing the liking is the pronoun I which is higher up in the structure in the label tree diagram as is clear from our picture so again T merges with VP to form T prime T prime we will say is an intermediate projection so every time we merge every time we make our tree grow we are projecting a bigger structure and we are heading towards the completion of the clause so in order to complete the clause we need to specify which the entity who experiences the liking who senses who has this emotion of liking is and that entity is the pronoun I which the whole thing I like in tennis is anchored in the present time so again when we merge T or tense head again head first and the verb phrase we form an intermediate projection T prime which will be complete after we have again merged T prime with a specifier when we merge T prime with a specifier pronoun I that is a category I a word I there is a constituent and belongs to a category pronoun we will specify when the liking took place and the liking of what took place and we know that the liking is the liking of tennis only then will we have a complete clause and so we will say that our clause is a TP so again let's go from bottom to top V merges with N to form a V phrase, a verb phrase. Verb phrase becomes the complement of T, the head T, to form a T prime. T prime requires that we specify when the state or sensing, I don't want to say action because it's basically not an action, but when the experiencing of like in tennis took place and that is in the present but we need to specify who experiences or senses this liking and that would be the pronoun I that's why we need to merge the pronoun I which is specifier hence the entity that specifies who undergoes the liking of tennis now do in the present to form a TP so TP is basically the um, acronym the abbreviation that we will use for tense phrase and we will say that a TP that a tense phrase is basically the formal way the technical way in which we will talk about clauses in the future we will argue that clauses are not TPs but CPs but so far we have been able to 
make arguments in favor of the TP analysis. Okay, so let us draw some conclusions from what we have just said. If last class we said that by putting a verb like and a complement tennis together we form a verb phrase, what we're saying is that we need to perform a very simple merger operation whereby a verb merges with a complement to form a phrase. But now things are getting a bit more complicated because when we get to T head merging with VP, we do not get a phrase. We do not get a maximal projection. We get an intermediate projection. And the reason is that we need a specifier to tell us who has undergone the liking of tennis in the present. That specifier is I, and it is only then that we form the TP. Conclusion, there are two ways in which we can form phrases. Head plus complement forms a phrase. So you put a head and a complement, you form a phrase. That's option number one. Or option number two, you put a head, you put a complement, you form an intermediate projection, in this case, T prime and then you need a specifier to form a maximal projection, in this case, TP. These are the two ways in which we can form phrases. So there's something interesting about this, namely the fact that there are two ways. We said last class that there's something called principle, or that there are principles that pertain universal grammar. One of the principles in question is binarity. So all operations are binary. As we will see, there is merger and there is movement. More about that in the future. And the ways in which we can form phrases are also binary because it's either head complement or head complement specifier. So again, it's either head complement or head complement specifier. So that's binary. The reasons why that is the case will be explored in future classes. So today it is important to have learned that that is the case, to have mentioned, to have pointed out that there are two ways of forming phrases, and in the future we will uh, further explore the reasons why that is the case. So uh, let us review some of the things that we have said today very quickly. We reviewed the fact that there are heads and complements to form phrases, and that all words are constituents belonging to categories that have a function in the formation of phrases, namely head and complement. That's what we said last class, and today we have added a whole other function, namely specifier. That leads to the uh, argument that there are two ways of forming phrases, head complement or head complement specifier. That is the second uh, claim we have made. And the third claim that we have made is that the syntax of the sentence, that is the syntactic structure of the clause, will have a semantic counterpart, which we will call argument structure. And that is basically what we said when we said that the verb like is the predicator. And as all acts of liking, the verb like requires an object to be liked, tennis, and a, if you allow me, the neologism, a liker, a sensor, or more technically an experiencer of the action like. So the predicator like will have an argument tennis with a theta or theta role theme and a whole other argument, the specifier I, with a whole other theta role that is called experiencer. So, the verb like is a predicator and it's got two arguments, therefore it is called a two-place verb. There is a verb with two arguments and each argument will have a role to play. The argument tennis is the thing that is being liked, therefore it is called the theme, and the specifier I is the sensor liker, if you like, or experiencer of the uh, 
emotion like and it will therefore receive that uh, theta roll theta roll it, it may be pronounced either way theta theta depending on the dialect okay so a lot of things I guess are clearer and I guess you got a lot of questions like well I want to go deeper into argument structure I want to know if there are if all verbs are two place verbs if all verbs have two arguments the answer is no some verbs have one argument they may have three arguments there is something we will discuss in the future we will also see that there are other theta roles however what we will state here is that there are only two ways of forming phrases head complement number one head complement specifier number two and uh, we want to know also if tp is the end of the phrase or as some writers claim there is a cp layer a complementizer le level and there is something that we will discuss next class but if you have liked your class uh, it would be great if you could like share it with fellow students also it would be great if you subscribe to our channel so that we can keep you posted and get you the latest updates and last but not least it is important to mention that all comments and questions are welcome because we want to have some sort of interaction with our audience so that we can clarify things that probably were not clear from our analysis all kinds of feedback are welcome so that we can make improvements uh, for our classes and our videos thanks for listening see you in class number three bye bye